Hey, it's time for another lesson and we have a question today from DPK272 and they say some really nice things. Thank you so much and I'll get to the question which is how can I find the right chord progression instantly to play any random song that's ambitious? Something that will suit the song. Okay, any random song means literally any song in the world. Let's narrow it down a little bit, all right, so that we have something to work with. We're going to work with popular music. Now think of big name artists today, Ed Sheeran, Taylor Swift, so on and so forth, all right? So these songs, they are popular for a reason and that's because they use musical devices, musical strategies, musical structures that work and sound good and they keep using them over and over again to create beautiful sounding music that appeals to white audiences. And the thing is, if you want to figure out songs instantly and um, you know do it repeatedly rather than just shooting in the dark, if you have an appreciation and understanding of these musical structures that are used to create these songs in the first place, then your trial and error process becomes a lot more informed and you can actually figure it out by ear instantly, believe it or not. Let's take a song for example, okay? So let's say one of the most popular Ed Sheeran songs, Perfect. Mm, I found a love. It's in the key of G. For me, E minor now. Darling, just dive right in C major. Follow my lead. Alright, D. So that little chord progression there, it's just a G, E minor, C, D. So let's say you know how to play this because you went to Ultimate Guitar, you Googled it, and then you said, okay, the, the chord progression is G, E minor, C, D. But then, then you go to the next song and it's a completely different set of chords, right? Some, some other song, let's say you've got a C, you've got an F, you've got a G, you've got all these different chords. Now there are hundreds and hundreds of many different chords out there. But the thing that you need to first understand is what key is the song in? And once you are in locked in a certain key, you realize that there are only so few chords that you can select. So let's say we are in the key of G, right? This song is in the key of G. Now the G major scale, we've got G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. All right. Now the most important chords in any pop song will be chord number one, obviously, which is going to be G. All right. So out of every scale degree, you can construct a chord out of them. In uh, chord number one will be G major. Next important chord will be chord number four which is going to be your G, A, B, C major chord. And then after that is chord number five, which is your D major chord. And after that is chord number six. Now, six chord is always going to be a minor chord. So in this case, it's going to be E minor, all right? So how to figure it out? Well, just count your A, B, Cs, right? G, A, B, C, that's number four. D, that's number five. E minor, that's number six. Now, these four chords, chord number one, four, five, and six, they're going to be jumbled around a lot in all of these pop songs that we um, listen to, right? Sometimes you get an, a, a little funky chord here and there, but most of the time, it's just going to be these four chords in different permutations. So for example, our perfect, our song perfect, it starts with G major chord number one. I found a love chord number one for me. Next is going to be chord number six. Darling, just dive right in. Chord number four is going to be C. Follow my lead. Now let's jump to the pre-chorus. And we were just kids when we failed. That's G, chord number one. In love, not knowing what. Same chord, right? Number six. It was, I will not give you up. Chord number four. This time. Okay, now here it's going to chord number one instead of five. Time, and then to five. So we've changed the order a little bit. The, the first one was one, six, four, five, right? So you've got G, E minor, C, D. E. And then now the pre-chorus is almost the same, except for one slight alteration, which is it's G in the not knowing what it was, same so far. I will not give you up so far. Okay, now here it goes back to one, then to five. Now just a slight alteration, but you notice it's the same old chords over and over again chorus and we were just kids when we failed hey, hey. <laughs> i just sang that right that, that, that's the pre-chorus um what's the the chorus go baby yeah now it starts with a minor chord dancing in the dark with you between my arms chord number six there chord number four 
Come number four, the grass. Now to one, and listen in number five to our favorite song. When I saw you in that dress, looking so beautiful, I don't. Okay, it's basically the same chords repeated over and over again. Now, you might ask the question, what if we are in the key of some other key other than G major? Well, the thing is, the beautiful thing is that the chord numbers will stay the same, although the exact chord that you're playing is going to change. So for example, let's say we're in the key of C major, right? C major here. What's our C major scale? C, D, E, F, G, A, B. That's it. What's the chord number one? C, chord number four, F, right? C, D, E, F. Chord number five is G. Chord number six is A minor. All right, so let's say we want to play perfect in the key of C major, okay? It might sound a little bit funky, but let, let, let's just give it a try. So it starts in chord number five. Chord number one. Uh, I found a love. Chord number one, now six. For me. Darling, just dive right in chord number four. Follow my lead. And we were just kids when we fail. And so on and so forth. All right, so that we can play that in that key. We can play in any key as long as we first know what the key we're in is, what the scale is, and what the chords are within that song. So now, you said play, how can we figure out any song? Well, the thing is, Let's try a different song. Um, let's try another Ed Sheeran song first. Let's say Photograph. Now, uh, Photograph, let's say we we just do it in the key of G, okay? Same thing. Let's try and figure it out together. Let's just do the chorus. Um, and you can keep me, okay? Chord number one usually starts on one, most likely. Inside the pocket of our ribs. Now, here it's going to change chord. Let's just do try on error. It's going to be... It's going to be either chord 1, 4, 5, or 6, but we're already on a chord 1, so now multiple choice. We're only left with 3, right? Only left with chord number 4, chord number 5, or chord number 6. Let's try. So you can keep me inside the pocket of our... Let's try chord number 4. Ripped. That doesn't sound very right. Inside the pocket of our ribbed. Okay, this one sounds better. This is chord number five. So, there we go. Jeans holding me closer to our eyes. Now, most likely, it's going to be one of the two remaining chords. Either chord six or chord number four. All right, let's try number six. Till our eyes meet. That works. Now, what's the last chord that we are left? Da, 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 da. Chord number four there. So you see, it's basically just MCQ, multiple choice questions. Of course, it's not always so straightforward, but you will see these patterns repeated over and over again, and then you you will, over time, you will start to recognize these chord progressions. Not the exact chord, but the chord function, chord one, four, five, or six. So for example, another song that I like to use to demonstrate this concept is With or Without You by U2. See the stone sit in your eyes. See the thumb twist in your side. So it's just basically a chord one, chord five, chord six, and then chord number four in the key of D major. With or without you, chord number one, chord number five, with or without, chord number six, chord number four, I can't live with or without you. Again, these four chords jumbled up. Now we can play that in a different key too. Let's say we play in G. Mm, with or without you, chord number one. With or without you, chord number six now. I can live number one to five, and then to chord number six, and then to chord number four. So DPK272, basically what I'm trying to say is that first you need to understand what are the chords that you have to choose from depending on what key you're on. And then after that, it's just a matter of trial and error in, and you only have so few chords that you can select your material from, okay? Now, if you want to study fingerstyle guitar with me in depth, of course, check out my fingerstyle guitar course, right? It's called Fingerstyle for the World. I go through all these concepts in depth and teach you how to arrange songs on your own for fingerstyle guitar. Now, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any more questions. I'll be more than happy to answer them. All right, have a great day and take care. Bye-bye.